All right, I'm gonna make a little uh, one take, no edit uh, video on my pepper tree here that I'm growing as a house plant. It's been growing for uh, six months now. I planted it in October and it uh, started coming up. I planted it from seed. It's a little, uh, these are great seeds. Uh, high quality seeds, um, the good ones in the store. This is a sweet, a sweet orange, a little uh, bell pepper, and they're uh, never grew. I've never grown anything like this before. This is all hydroponic. This is the way I grow, um, and I had, you know, no green thumb. Didn't know what I was doing, and guess what? It turned out perfect. Um, this thing is still producing, um, and it's uh, six, seven months later. It uh, constantly is uh, producing new fruit. I've been eating this like crazy. I have not had to buy, and I, I cook a lot, and I, I, I use these bell peppers all the time. And uh, I used to buy the yellow ones at the store, you know, whatever they cost, I don't care. Um, but have not had to buy them since because uh, it just grows and grows and grows. All right, so let me explain. I didn't know anything about hydroponics when I first started. And I went through a learning curve because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Now I could tell you it is super simple. Do not spend almost any money. You can do everything on your own, super cheap, uh, super simple. You don't need any devices. You need very little. So how does it work? It is, I think it's amazing. Oh God, it's hard for me to lift this. <laughs> but if you could look down there, there are roots there. Uh, this thing has uh, just grown and grown and grown. It's, it's hard for me to lift because I'm shooting this. Uh, by myself here. So let me let me just try to explain how this works. This is uh, this is uh, a pepper tree, and I'm just so amazed that just getting uh, growing here, basically on the windowsill, that it's been able to produce all this fruit. Okay, so how does it work? Okay, so um, you can go on Amazon and buy this product called from General Hydroponics. It's called Maxi Grow. This is just uh, uh, one kilo, it's very cheap, of nutrients. It's all you need. You mix it with water. I just use tap water. The tap water here in San Diego is very harsh. It's got a lot of minerals, which is probably good. A lot of chlorine, which nobody cares about. Um, I, you don't need to filter. You don't need to do anything with the water. Just use the water. And the, you mix the nutrient solution, uh, one gram per liter. I recommend you get a um, nice little digital gram scale. This thing's got, this thing measures down to 10 milligrams uh, resolution. And it's super cheap, super accurate, fantastic. Okay, so that's how you do the nutrient solution. Very simple. Tap water, one gram per liter. And uh, that's how you start, start it. Now, of course, your plant is not going to, Okay, so when you mix that solution initially and you load up your, um, and you put it in the, um, in any kind of receptacle that will hold it, I, this is a $1 Ikea trash can with a little hole drilled in. This is the outer container. This is a $8 Home Depot um, decorative, you know, uh, painted white, which is good for temperature, nice and reflective. Uh, hides the ugly dark black one that could collect heat. Okay, notice the two holes that I drilled. You do have to get uh, whatever a quarter inch or three eighth inch drill bit. Uh, get it for plastic or metal. Uh, ask them, just tell the people you need to drill through plastic. They'll give you the special bit, the bit that's. This is what's known as this is sold. This is this is a uh, net pot, this is probably a, what is that, a, might be a, uh, let me see, what is that, five inch? Okay, let's call that a five inch net pot. And this is meant to fit over a five gallon, typical five gallon container. Fits over this perfectly. This is not five gallons, this is much smaller. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think if uh, this is probably less than five liters um, 
but it works just fine. Now, there's not a lot of solution in here, uh, but the roots, there's enough room for the roots. The plant has done very fine with it, did not care. Um, I just have to water it frequently. So I don't think, I, I don't think, you know, I had to be here the whole time or someone's in the home to water the plant. And uh, I would say if you left for three or four days, you might have a problem. But, so I check it every day. And okay, again, so um, you can see that's my ear pump. Uh, this one feeds two, it feeds another, another plant here. Um, super cheap, I got that one at Walmart for a few bucks uses this uh, aquarium tubing and there is an air stone i don't have the air stone but it it's just an aquarium air stone that attaches to the end there and makes bubbles so let me let me show you my uh we could look here there it is you can see all the bubbles coming out here and this is my basal plant so you can see it in action that's how it works okay so simple plastic stuff Gotta get this out of the way now. Go back and talk about the pepper plant. And I think all I gotta tell you is how to care for it. So when I first started, oh, I'm gonna walk over here to my seed. So I um I went, this is how I uh, germinate my seeds. I have some lettuce here and some cilantro here. They're coming up. Not gonna show you. You could kind of see it. It's there, believe me. Um, these are, um, this is, uh, these, uh, let me see if I can remember the name. <laughs> it's been a while. These, um, um, oh my gosh, I forget now. The cubes, I'm going to have to go look. Um, uh, the, what's the name of those? Cubes, the, um, it's not hydrogen. Oh, jeez. Oh. Uh, Rock wool, okay, the rock wool cubes are what you plant the seed in. And once it sprouts, you let it, you let it get big enough until you do a transplant here. So these are known, these are the um, hydrogen. These are inert clay balls. You get them in a big bag at your uh, hydroponics store. Oh, you know, Amazon, if you don't have that. And, uh, so um, I, did, I did use an artificial light on this guy for a while and uh, it did well under it. But in this last phase, I, you know, in the last few months, I, I just took the, the light off and this thing just grows and grows and grows. I mean, you could look it up. And so this thing just produces um, fruit. It starts flowering. I knew nothing about this at all. You know, just, just I, I, I was, I, I would have to tell you that I would not have believed that there was enough energy in this windowsill to produce all this, um, you know, all this growth and all this sweet tasting fruit at this, at this, this fast, but there's plenty, it works. So this, this is a south facing window. It gets, it gets a few hours of direct sunlight. It does, um, but it's, you know, it's not as much as it would be outside. Now, the good thing was indoors was very good for its growth during the winter because um, it's nice and it's, it's room temperature. So it's, it's a great temperature for these peppers. Um, and so little white flowers come out. And I had no idea this was gonna happen. I, I, didn't, wor I didn't have to worry about any uh, fertilization. It fertilized itself. And uh, then you got these green peppers that popped up eventually. I was just shocked and amazed when it grew. And then uh, it took a while for the first ones to turn color, but then they turned color and then they were perfect. They, the first ones were small, the first few, but there were just so many flowers, so much uh, fruit production that it's amazing. Uh, so it, uh, let me just talk about the care. Like when you are, again, it's hard for me to lift this because it's so heavy. Uh, Initially, the good thing is, initially you will mix up a batch of the solution, put it in there, and it will take a while. So when your plant is small, it takes forever for it to, to drink all that solution. So you don't really have to worry about, about its consistency or its concentration. 
as this thing gets older, as you get an older plant, it, it, it just drinks a lot of water and it's probably because uh, it gets hot in the day and it just, it just uses it to cool itself or just to keep itself uh, watered. So uh, as it matures, it's pretty much drinking more of the water than the nutrients, but it is growing at a tremendous rate. So how do you know, how do you maintain the right uh, consistency or the right um, density of nutrients, okay? Now, uh, you can do it. No, I'm not gonna use a meter because it's impossible. A, I can't get my hands down there to put a meter and to measure the number. So you kind of eyeball it or you kind of guess, right? So you, let's say, I'd say a good technique, <laughs> I'm pretty lazy, but if you have another hand, if someone could help you, just, just to be absolutely safe, just change the water every week um, with the right solution and then just replace using tap water or very lightly, uh, maybe one quarter, you know, solution. So if you do that and replace it every, every week, you won't have any problems. Your plant will grow fine. That's just a guess. You can learn for yourself. Um, what I did was I just winged it. Uh, I would use water at some times. Other times I would use half solution and then I would feel guilty and I go, oh, I think the plant needs more nutrients and I would put full strength. And then only occasionally would I take the time to empty out the, the dregs and just start with new solution, which is probably the best move. Okay, so anyway, um, the only problem, so the only problem that I encountered with this is that um, six months down the line, believe it or not, I started getting a little bit of, and this was beautiful before because this was the most entirely healthy plant. Nothing, you know, there was, it was, every leaf was totally healthy. Um, and it still remains that way pretty much, except I did start getting a little bit of an aphid problem and you will get aphids if you over fertilize. So I would say, um, now the plant is pretty resistant to the aphids, so it's not a big problem. They're just, you know, it's not a big issue. Although I know they're there, but it's not, not much of a problem. But you could probably avoid that by using the, by not over fertilizing it, by having the right amount of, of nutrients. So, so in, in summary, here we go. Let me just summarize this thing. Uh, pepper grows great. It loves the indoor temperatures. It loves a sunny window. Uh, it is so easy to grow. It doesn't require any care. You could prune it a little bit to control the growth a little bit, or you could just let it go and it will just produce so much fruit. It is surprising that it's so easy, takes very little effort, and it's just the absolute basics. We are, this is what they, is known as a bubble bucket. This technique, bubble bucket, it's a, you know, it's a aquarium hose, aquarium pump, aquarium hose, uh, air stone. This stuff is all very, everyone knows what you're talking about when you get this uh, five inch net pot. And I just used a smaller container because I like the look of it, right? I mean, I'm, I grow this indoors. I don't want a five gallon uh, black, you know, uh, construction site, uh, you know, bucket here. It's something a little bit more decorative. Um, it's very quiet. There's no external lighting, works just great. You're eating this stuff, fine fresh. Uh, this plant lasts six months. I'm gonna tear it down probably after, uh, after all this fruit, who knows? In the next few weeks, I might just tear it down just because um, cause I grow other things here. And it's, it's you know, who knows? Uh, okay, and that's it.